and I've been sharing as much as I can about this because I think it's really, really important. And I am creating somewhat of a new system and it's called Cherish the Children. If you don't know the definition of cherish, it means to love and protect. And that's my real name. I was born addicted to heroin. I was placed into the foster care system in California when I was four days old because my mother was a drug addict. She did not care. My father, I believe, was in jail at the time. And so I was left to fight on my own at four days old. Before I turned three, I had had my arms and legs duct taped. I had had my mouth duct taped shut because I was a drug baby. Drug babies are not easy to take care of. They come with a lot of extra behaviors and they need a lot of extra support. So I had my leg broken and I had my arm ripped from its socket. And then I moved on to live with family, distant relatives, who also thought it was okay to hurt a child. And it's not. So I'm here as a walking testament to tell you that this is not some fucked up conspiracy theory. This is real. There are real kids out there that are crying every single day. There are kids out there that are hurting because an adult thinks it's okay to hurt them. And that's not okay. And if you wanna think it's fake, I'll even bring it straight to your cities. Beaverton High School. Did you know that they employed a pedophile? Did you know that? You probably didn't. Well, I had him arrested about two years ago and he's serving a measure 11 crime in the state of Oregon. Woo! He was also my cousin and my foster parent because when you have to uh, switch from state to state, it's called an interstate compact within the foster care system. There are certain requirements and regulations that are supposed to be followed that weren't. And because they weren't, that landed me as a 17 year old girl who was never sexually active to be sexually assaulted by my own family member. This was in Astoria, Oregon. He was an Astoria High School wrestling coach. He was a chief warrant officer in the Coast Guard, a civil servant. He could never do anything like that. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I wasn't his only victim. Had I not stepped forward, his other victims would have only given him six months in jail. And that girl, all of these kids had been traumatized, tortured, groomed since they were 15 years old because one of them was my best friend in high school. Do you think it is okay for young girls to have to put up with that kind of shit from teachers or coaches or principals? No, it's not. That man was arrested at Beaverton High School two years ago. And I st stood on trial for four hours while I was asked every single situation about my life. So that way I could be judged. That way I could be told that I was the liar. Well, I'll tell you right now, a judge did not think that I was a liar. And I am not a liar. And I am going to create a new system for these kids and for these victims. And I don't care how old you are, you can be involved in it. I'm gonna create new laws because did you know that the United States of America is the only country to not adopt or ratify the, the Convention of the Rights of a Child? Did you know that? Did you know that our children have zero rights legally in the United States of America? Whoops, I unplugged you, I don't know. It might not work, okay, I unplugged it, I tripped, sorry. But I just think it's really weird that in, on September 2nd, in 1990, the United Nations would ratify this, but the United States of America doesn't think it's important? When you have 450,000 children a year that go through foster care? 450,000 children go through the foster care system every year in the United States of America. Did you know that 65,000 of them go missing every year? and no one is looking for them. Why? Oh, because they don't have parents. Or their parents don't even know that they're not here because they've been trafficked or they've run away because their foster parents are abusing them. Or they decided, you know what, I'm 15, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna make my own way. A lot of them died. 
a lot of them end up homeless. You want to know what your homeless population consists of? It's veterans and former foster kids. Yep. Seriously. Veterans and former foster children are the ones that are ending up trafficked, they're ending up homeless, and they're ending up dead. And nobody cares. And I know that you want to think this is some kind of conspiracy theory. However, I am the product and the walking testament of what this is and what this looks like. So if you want to take your sign over there and go shove it up your ass, that would be great. Because this isn't a conspiracy theory. You want to talk about Pizzagate? Everyone wants to get so upset about Pizzagate. Let me tell you something. I was a resident at 16 years old at Boys Town. Do you know what that is? Have you heard of the Franklin cover-up? If you haven't, I suggest you look into it because it's real. You want to know how I know? Because I was placed in a group home when I was 17 years old. I turned 17 in that group home. It was a 30-day emergency shelter for girls that had just been released from juvenile hall. I was not supposed to be there because I was a foster child. So I was there on accident. We were taken to a mansion in Agora Hills where we went to a pizza party. I was told this is a viewing party. This is how people decide who they're gonna traffic and who they're not. And I have not found a single girl from that time. But I can find all my friends in elementary school. How's that, how's that possible? Huh? They've since closed down, but I highly suggest you look into it. Did you know that Boys Town is actually uh, affiliated with Godfather's Pizza? You can look up a pizza box that has Boys Town on a Godfather's Pizza box. So you want to sit here and talk about Pizzagate not being real, whatever. That's fine. Pedophilia is real. Monsters are real. And if we don't do something, your future's fucked. Because if you don't like me, let me tell you what. I'm the one of 3% that made it out alive. I'm the one of 3% that went to college and got a nursing degree because I wanted to give back, okay? There are kids out here that do not get that chance, that do not get to go and have any type of college because they give up. 80% of children that are in foster care are trafficked. 80%, 50% of foster kids that age out of the system are homeless within 18 months because they don't have a plan or a support system to set them up to make sure that they don't fail. So if there's no one there to help them, they fail. It's just like when you're in the military and your time is up in the military. When you're out, you're out. You're, you're, uh, the benefits do not continue after you're out of the military unless you have like medical or a couple of other things, which foster kids can have like college stuff, but it's really rare. It's really hard to get. And it's so more, com it's way more common for these kids to fail than it is for them to succeed. And that's crap. Because at the end of the day, I'm sure you hear the children are our future, right? That's super common, right? Nobody thinks about the children are our future criminals too, okay? You have the ability to change that. You really want equality? You really want equal rights? You really want to be about everyone? Well, kids come in all fucking colors. They come in all sizes. They come in all kinds of different personalities. They all have different, just amazing qualities, but we refuse to give them a chance or the respect that they deserve. We refuse to give them like a safe place where they can talk about the things that have happened to them. I worked at Dornbecker Children's Hospital in the pediatric intensive care unit, okay? I was the first person that these parents would see when their children was br were brought in on life support. And I did not last long there because I couldn't handle all of the adolescent suicides as young as nine years old, okay? We were averaging at least three to five suicides a week. A nine-year-old should never think that the only answer is to not exist. A nine-year-old should never think that they cannot talk about the things that are happening to them or that there isn't someone safe enough willing to listen. We need to do better. And this is on both sides. I don't care who you're voting for. I really don't. I care about kids, period. Yeah. On both sides of the fence. I don't care what color you are. I care about kids. Kids come in all colors. They come in every race. 
It's the one thing we as human beings all have in common. We've either been a kid, we've had a kid, or we've been around children. So that's our job to protect them because we are the adults. We set the example. It does not matter if you're a mom, a dad, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, or a stranger. There are children watching you on every single aspect or every single corner. And do you want them to watch you kill people in the street? Is that what you want? Because that's what they're gonna start doing because they think that's what you're supposed to do because that's what the adults are doing right now. The adults are all angry. They're all killing everybody. Maybe that's what we're supposed to do. Well, I'm telling you right now, that's the example you're setting for children. I'm pretty sure that's really unacceptable and it's really pathetic. And we need to be better as moms, as dads, as like adults for these kids because they are the ones that actually don't have a voice. And it's about fucking time we give them one because I waited 33 years. I've waited 19 years in the foster care system for someone to know or someone to say that I mattered or that the things that happened to me mattered and nobody did. And that's wrong. And I will not let that happen to another child ever. So I'm going to create a system that is going to protect these kids. And my first step is ratifying the convention of the rights of the child. That will be the first thing that I will be going for is making sure that every child in the United States of America has a voice, has protection, has food, has shelter, and has fair trials. Because that's why our kids don't have trials. That's why our kids don't have protection and rights. Because we don't enforce the rights of the child. And that's crap. Because every other nation, every other country, out of like 193 or 194 countries, Somalia doesn't count because they don't have a federal government. So that doesn't matter. They don't count, okay? Every other country has this for their kids, except for the USA. Why? How come? Why don't we want to keep our kids safe? Why don't we want to give them legal rights to keep their bodies safe, healthy, sheltered? Why does the, uh, the US not have civil rights for children? I do not think that is okay. We do not. We love kids. Kids need to be loved. I don't know, but it needs to change. It must. We need to, we need to know why, why kids don't matter. Like, it's crazy. So I'm going to start working on this, and I'm going to need all the help I can get. I'm planning a march. It's going to be called the Villagers March, because last time I checked, it takes a village. Right? Yep. Well, right now, it's going to take a nation. It's going to take a whole world. And that's what this march is about. And there are people all over the world that know that this is going to be happening. I've got t-shirts on sale at Oregon City Modified Art and Design uh, screen printing. 90%, 90, that's a big number. 90% of these proceeds are gonna go back into organizations that support children, that support victims, that give these people the tools they need to heal so that way they can go succeed and maybe mentor and maybe be there for the kids that didn't have anyone. That's what you wanna do. You wanna break chain cycles. You wanna break the cycle of abuse and addiction and all of these things and that's where it starts, by teaching kids. Because if you don't start addressing kids, those are your future, your future criminals or your future leaders. Which one do you want it to be? Did you know that 80% 80, 80 of the inmates that are incarcerated today in your prison systems were former foster youth? 80% of the kids, okay, 80% of inmates that were in, like, that are currently in prison experience the foster care system at some point in their life. I think we can do better because if they were foster kids, that means they were kids, right? We could have helped them not end up breaking into someone's house and stealing their things. We could have helped them not turn to drugs. We could have helped them know that they are worth something and that they can make a difference when they're older. Because these are the kids, the ones that you're forgetting, are the ones that are gonna change the world. These are the ones that are gonna view the world in a very different perspective than the average person because they've seen the ugly. They've seen the monsters and they've seen how bad it can really get. So I'm just gonna let you know, if you don't like what I have to say, if you don't like me, well then I really hate to see what your future is about to look like because I'm not one of 3% that make it out. I'm not one of 3% that succeed and don't let my trauma overcome me because I know that I have a very big purpose in this world. 
and I do believe it's this right now. So I'm asking all of you guys, for our next march, you better come. Like, you need to be here rallying with every single one of us, or it's gonna be your kids are next. Seriously, at the end of the day, it's your kids are next, and you're gonna be coming to me asking me how to keep them safe. You're gonna be coming to me asking me what I did so I didn't get killed. How do I help my child heal? You're gonna come to these victims that have been through this. Do you think that they owe you an explanation or they owe you anything? No, they don't because you shit on them as kids. Literally, that's why they have all this trauma. But I'm gonna tell you right now, they're the most loving, forgiving people that you'll ever meet because they know how ugly the world is. They know how bad it can get. So you can approach victims that have been through these things because they're the first people that are willing to help. They're the first people that are willing to stand up and protect everybody because they know what it's like to fight against a monster. So I'm going to encourage all of you guys to start making a difference and start paying attention, being alert, looking for different signs and different things that might not seem quite right when you have kids because it's really important. Trauma bonding. If you don't know what that is, is a huge word that people need to understand. Teach those fuckers a lesson. Basically, if a child is abused at a young age, that is how they interpret love. Yeah. So they are more likely to go on and get into domestic violence relationships. They are more likely to be abused for their entire lives because no one took the time to stop and say, hey, what happened to you is not okay. What is going on is not okay. That's not okay that someone's t treating you that way. So then they go on for the rest of their lives thinking that it's okay, that someone calls them a bitch, that it's okay that a man can hit them, that it's okay that all of these things are going on. When I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not okay. It's enough, we've had enough. And you guys all need to start standing up for kids. Break the cycle! Break the cycle. Break the cycle. Who's next?